Good afternoon, everybody. I'm with Paolo today, a bit of a different guest, um, but I think he's a really interesting guy at age 11, right? Yes. Age 11. Yes. And I'm going to, uh, you may think, why is Dean inter interviewing somebody who's 11? This guy has done more in the last three years than a lot of adults have done in their whole life. So, uh, Paolo, thank you for being on this uh, little interview. Thank you uh, for inviting me. Thank you for having me on. I, you sent me some of the stuff you've done. You've been very busy in the last three years, right? <laughs> very busy, very busy. So you wrote a book at age seven? Yes. And how many books have you written since? Um, so I've written three books since, and I'm uh, I'm writing in the like the middle stages of writing two new books, so I'm going to have five soon. Five books. Most people don't write one in their lifetime. And in the space of probably five years, you'll have written five books. Yes. So what made you want to write a book? Um, so the thing that made me want to write a book, um, well, I'll start with the person who actually influenced me to write a book. Um, so the person who influenced me to write a, write a book was actually my mum. Okay. So my mum was an author of a book called Lone Parenthood. And while she um, had gave birth to my older brother, Trey Sean, and my elder sister, Lachey Bin Salmi, um, she was a single parent during that time. And she wanted to teach other parents how she coped with being a single parent at the time, giving them the teachings and also the different steps at that time other parents who, who may be single parents men or women can use in their single parenting and like one of the few tips that she shared in our book was instead of saying to your kid i know i'm the best parent in the world ask your kids what the, they that you can do to improve your parent improve your parenting so it's a fun and a unique time between you and your child so my mum talked about that in her book and then next was my brother uh, eldest uh, sister, the Shay and Trey Sean, and they both co authored the book called Kids That Dream Big. And I was a kid that dreamed big. So I went and I came up with a topic as soon as I got home. And I, I said, I want to be, I want to be pint sized adventurer because I love going on adventures. And I wanted to share the word with other children to go on adventures as well. And the main reason why I created this book is so that children can not only understand that you can go on adventures outside, but you can also go on adventures inside, a journey of self-discovery, learning more about yourself. So it was more of a journey to see, uh, like more of a science experiment, to see what other kids would think about this book, about going and think about my idea of taking them on a journey of self-discovery and also an external journey, exploring our beautiful world. So, um, just in case you haven't watched this, by the way, this is not scripted. Yeah. You don't know what I'm going to ask, right? Yeah. No. What do you think people of your age need to learn in terms of self-discovery? Uh, great question, by the way. I think that um, children need to learn um, to come from a place of why they'd like to do and go on this journey of self-discovery because a lot of the time some kids say that my mom's told me to go and have this journey with my myself or someone else has told me someone else has advised me to do this this journey and you're thinking about what you're going to do how you're going to do it, but really come from an essence of why you are going to go on this journey of self-discovery and the how and the what's and the whatever's will come along the way as you go on that journey of self-discovery and also it's it, it, once you go on a journey of self-discovery, you're you, at first you're a blank page, but later on that page is going to be filled, and you're going to have lots more pages in that book, which creates your life story. So are you going to live your life going on journeys only outside, exploring different places in the world? I'm not saying that's bad, but I'm saying you have to have a balance of going on a journey internal self-discovery and also a journey of external. So I think when kids 
are going on journeys of self-discovery, they need to come from an essence of why I want to do do this. Why am I doing this? Then, like I said before, the hows, the whats, whatevers will come along the way. Okay. What should Pe- what do people need to discover? Well, I think that's for them. that's up to them because they're going on that journey of self-discovery. So I think the top key thing they need to discover is what is their purpose? Because a lot of the time with children, adults, all ages across the world, they've lived their lives, whether it's 60, 80, or they may be old, young, middle-aged, they don't know what their purpose is. So that's why you have to go on that journey of self-discovery because a lot of people come into this life and come out of this life not knowing what their purpose is so they don't fulfill anything that they needed to fulfill in that life space, in that time. So when you first go on a journey of self-discovery, find out your purpose so that you live life to the fullest. I- I'm totally with you here in terms of understanding, you know, why maybe not why you're here is in the sense of you know was it something up there that <laughs> made me yeah. but but um what you what do you want to devote your life to as a purpose yes. yeah what, what what gets you up in the morning gets you excited and thinks this isn't work i love doing what i do what's exactly. your what's your why my why is it's because my why is the people out there. They're, they're my why because I've seen so many children, adults, and also elderly people come into their lives and come out of it not knowing how, not knowing they have to do in their life. And I, I, and I wanted to leave something there for them to say, hey, this is what you, you I, I can't tell you what your purpose is, but you have to go on that journey of self-discovery. That's what that's my why to see other people go on journeys of self-discovery, because if you see maybe it's 99 percent or maybe even 50 percent, it's still a high percentage. If there's that many people going on journeys of self-discovery, the other half will come on board. Why? Because those people, once they've gone on a journey of self-discovery, they're going to share those journeys with other people and other people are going to say, oh, that that's really really cool i don't even know what my purpose is let me go on a journey of self-discovery so that's my why like a ripple effect because when so your your why is to help people find their why yes that's pretty cool (laughs) i was going to ask something i'll tell you i'll be straight with you i was going to ask you something and i didn't say at the beginning because i thought i didn't want to come across as um uh whatever but i often say to people what do you want to be when you grow up and i don't say that to people your age i say that to people my age and i say it jokingly but lots of people do drift through and never really intentionally decide or discover what they're doing with their life so they go from job to job or they start a business but they don't really understand why they do it for an example, they start a business to provide for their family and the business takes over their life and wrecks their family. <laughs> you know, a better question that you should ask the people is, um, this, it, I actually got this from one of our family friends. And um, instead of asking what they want to do when, they, when they're older, ask them what they want to do now because they get, into, they get the feeling of what they want when uh, maybe in maybe in two years time so they're in that space and they know how to do it so it's 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 a much better question to ask mm. because you're you're programming their mind to think it, it's kind of like it's it's a big questioner because some people don't even know what they want to do now so instead of asking what they want to do when they're older because some people can say well life just happens well you make life happen <laughs> because if yeah. you don't make us if you make this action it ripple effects and makes this or that you get that um you that you get that you get that outcome so if you do mm-hmm. something you know that that's going to be your end outcome so ask them what they'd like to do now so they know they think of action steps that they're going to take to live their dream lifestyle 
their dream life, have their dream car, their dream house, their dream family. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me let me put the thumb screws on a little bit more now. <laughs> what happens when you try and pursue that dream life and you meet obstacles? How do you keep yourself focused and motivated and stop you going back into drifting and just letting everything happen? Um, I, I think like what in, in every circumstance to, to overcome an, a certain obstacle in life, like I said before, always go on a journey of self-discovery because that obstacle has obviously come from a root cause that you have made that, that, that has ripple affected from one of your actions. So you really have to dig deep, look at what you may have done in the past or what you're doing now and think, if I go on a journey of self-discovery, I can change my actions, learn how this obstacle has come in my way and think, I can overcome this because I know the root cause of it. When you know the root cause of something, you know how to overcome it because you know the, the type of recipe you need to overcome that thing, right? Mm -hmm. So always come from the root cause of why that thing has happened in every obstacle in life because an obstacle has to be triggered. So when you trigger something off, don't think it won't have a lasting impact. It's gonna have a lasting impact and it's gonna affect you maybe not now, but in the future, and it's going to hit you hard. So think, what am I doing now that's going to affect myself and those around me in the future? So are you sure you're not 111? <laughs> yeah. what, what do you think? There's no denying. I've spoke to your brother as well, and there's no denying you, you are both. I've never met your sister, but you're, you're both very focused and know what you want to achieve and and you communicate things that most 11 year olds go huh, what <laughs> that's not on my playstation <laughs> <laughs> what do you think has has shaped you to be the person you are now uh definitely my mom and the hardships that she's gone through and how she's overcome those obstacles and been that person to lead the pack because there's lots while my mum was going through lots of hard times she was still that person that would go and help other people going through the same hard time as her so really my mum and also the people I surround myself with like yourself you shape me every person that shapes me Every person that I meet shapes me maybe by 1%, right? Mm -hmm. And they add a little bit to your personality. So I, I, the people that I surround myself with, like yourself, so well, the, let's, I, I'm, all, all the people I surround myself with make the person I am today. So what's, what's other than the, the, two, the two more books you're working on, fast forward 10 years. So you're 21. What are you doing? Doing what I love, making money, doing what I love. So I'm going to be doing the same thing that I'm doing now, but there's going to be a bigger cause because there's going to be other people doing it. My sh teachings are going to be shared worldwide. Well, they already are, but it's going to be shared more, even more globally. So more people will hear my teachings. They'll go on journeys of self-discovery. And that's that's how I'd like, that's probably how my life would look in 10 years. And maybe a few more books added to the list. <laughs> and, and also, Dean, don't interview me in 10 years because there will be a much bigger bio. <laughs> <laughs> But this, this, you know what? I, I'm really enjoying talking to you because you have a certainty about what you want to do. And I can remember um, I've arrived where I have through the experiences that have happened to me. Hmm. And I look back and go, I wish I knew now what I did back then. And I'm I'm talking to you and thinking, you know a lot of the stuff that I kind of have learned. It's took me like 20 years to learn. You know now. So it will be really interesting to see um, see your journey over the next 10 years. But 
you've done some really interesting stuff already, not just the books, not just um, helping other kids. Tell tell us about some of the things you've done because you've worked with some big organizations, some big names. Yes. Tell, do, do a bit of a brag. Go on. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, as I said, uh, as we started this interview, my name is Paola Ben Salmi. I'm an author, public speaker, mentor and a coach. I'm also an ambassador for a company called Water to Go which is a filtration system that eliminates 99.9% .9 of viruses, pesticides. So anything that you don't want in your water, it eliminates 99.9% .9 of it. Uh, but it doesn't eliminate salt water. It doesn't work on salt water. And also I'm an ambassador for um, a company called uh, Choose Love. Um, which is I'm an ambassador for that company um, because the lady who created it is called Jesse Lewis and her son uh, died and she actually the person who killed her son she went to that prison that he was at and said I forgive you so wow. I'm an ambassador for that um, company Choose Love and also I'm an ambassador for a media company called Viewbox which is coming out soon so I'll let you guys know who's watching this when that will be coming out and um, yeah so I've worked with big brands over the years uh, such as uh, Nike, Sports Direct, Toys R Us, uh, a, a lot of big companies, <laughs> I won't brag too much but yeah but those are the, some things that I've done well, while Steve being handsome and young. <laughs> yeah. And, and how do you find time to get school in the middle of all of this? Um, so I'm actually homeschooled. Okay. So I've been homeschooled for maybe no longer than a year. So just under a year. And um, so that started when I got bullied in school. So we, we mum was like, no, not going to happen homeschooled so um what i love about our homeschooling is that instead of going to science teachers we go to the experts so we also work with brunel university where we do stem so science a technology engineering and also maths so we do all of our science engineering and uh, all, all of our stem work there at brunel university and uh, yeah so mum takes us to the experts instead of science teachers and english teachers um because she really lo uh, she loved that um you could actually get those professors those people who work in universities um that that they could actually teach you so she took the opportunity uh, to uh, get us taught by people at brunel and in different fields and if in different areas of life Wow. Wow. Y your mum's incredible. <laughs> she's, a so she's a superwoman. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's, we're going to have a mix of people watching this from the random people who find it on YouTube to uh, business owners, to people who work for businesses. I'm going to ask, and again, this is unscripted. So uh, I, I, I'm putting you on the spot. If there's one piece of advice you could give to any human being right now, what would it be? I think uh, any advice that I'd give to people right now would be just be you. Because I think nowadays there's too many people trying to project a side of themselves that they haven't even seen that, that and they're trying to be someone else for their marketing marketed audience and they're trying to be this certain person and sh and tr not being themselves and trying to project that they are this other person other than themselves so the, the advice that i would give is just be yourselves because if i like through my experience talking from my experience in life if i i wasn't myself for a very long time like it, it may sound really weird, but a lot of people are not being themselves. They're choosing to be someone. They're choosing just to be someone in a body. So they're not actually choosing to share their personality with other people. And what's got me very far in life is just being me other than being someone else that I haven't even seen. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're all wearing a mask to either conform or... Um we're choosing paths that confine us yes 
Yeah. We're choosing to mask our real self. And and I'm like not I'm not saying I'm giving you the opportunity now. You've always had the opportunity, but you haven't chosen to take the mask off. So take the mask off now. Just start choosing to be you. That's um that's pretty big advice for for like millions of people. Because <laughs> yeah. millions of people are worried about what other people think of them. So they they put they behave in a way to um gain acceptance when actually what we really want is people to accept us for who we are hmm. some people what... don't even accept themselves so it, it's a really big major thing that's happening right now do you think social media has made that worse definitely because i think like even like uh media uh, like people who, let's say, YouTubers, influencers, they're trying to be someone else for their audience. And and what uh, that's what I'm trying to teach, which is instead of trying to be someone else for your audience who didn't like the other, you, you actually, who didn't actually like you being yourself, just be you for you. And you, along the way, there'll p be people who don't like who you are but there will also be a majority of people who love who you are. So stick with those people who love who you are. Don't care about the, the people that say they don't like you. Don't try and be someone else for them. Try and be you. It's actually it's actually quite hard work trying to be somebody you somebody else. Yes. Because you have to remember to behave in a particular way, do things a particular way, whereas being you is is easy. Yeah, it's, it's natural. Uh, Paolo, this has been an incredible uh, little interview, actually. Um, I think You've taken words out of my mouth. This has been an absolutely amazing interview. Thank you so much. And, and he's the optimist and compliments as well. Um, <laughs> no, uh, seriously, let's. Um, I've been impressed with you and your brother. Um, I think you're doing amazing stuff. And you have something in your eyes as I would say, in that you're not just saying things, there's things you believe and things that you uh, stand for that people can see that you're actually talking about. You you believe what you're saying, which is really, really good. Thank so uh, I'm going to, you know, when I emerge from doing all these interviews and getting them all edited, I'm going to catch up with you both because I think you're both two incredible young people. And, I love that. You are um, amazing as well. You're a big inspiration. I'll I'll pay you for the compliment later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paolo, this has been incredible. Thank you so much, uh, guys. Uh, I'm going to put some of Paolo's links on here. So go find his social channels if he's there. Where, which is your favorite social channel? Uh, LinkedIn is best. LinkedIn. Yeah. So. so I will share Paolo's links here for his LinkedIn. Go find him. Uh, watch what he's up to listen to him because he's he knows what he's talking about as well so thank you for watching everybody uh see you on the next interview